Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade for Celebrity Page, and I'm welcoming Caesar, Andre, and Benson Milan, and we're talking about their new TV show and book. Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, and Caesar and Andre Milan. I should be excited to see both of you, but the real stars of this interview, <laughs> Benson, Benson, sitting on my lap. I'm like, right? you guys. Go, go watch your TV show, go buy their book, and Benson and I are going to just yeah. hang out. I actually was joking around before you came yes. in. I'm like, you guys may not leave with him. Like, yeah. he may become our, like, permanent show dog. What yeah. do you think? <laughs> well, you know, Benson is part of our family, so you can't keep him. Translation, you are never leaving with my dog. <laughs> That's right. You have a busy month ahead, the both of you. First of all, congratulations on Thank the new you. TV show. You had to get him involved. That's pretty you know, cool. My kids are being part of uh, this rehabilitation in the TV show since the moment they were born. And so now, is, for me, is a perfect time, especially because Andre's 22, to be part of this movement that we have, which is called Dog Nation. We come and help uh, organizations who are doing great things in society already, and we put the spotlight, and I want him uh, you know, to see, the, to see the, how, how can we offer people a platform who are already making a difference. So we want to connect with people, and we want to offer our, you know, our skills. How cool is it? that your dad is the dog whisperer. That's the only, the easiest way to put it. Like, right. how many times do you get asked, oh my God, or it's told, oh my God, I love your dad. Right. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> uh, but me, personally, I just see him as my dad. I don't see him that he's some celebrity. I just see that he has he's really good with animals and he knows what to do. And when it comes time to you know intervene yourself with the animals and integrate, then you should listen to him mm -hmm. over your instincts because obviously he has more knowledge to what, you, what I do. You and I were joking before. Mm -hmm. You started when you did the dog whisper, pretty much on the streets, changing behind bushes. Yeah. And you've built this unique empire. You're a pioneer. Did you ever imagine it becoming what it's become? I, I didn't. Honestly, I, I, I didn't know. I know what I wanted to become. I wanted to be the best dog trainer in the world. I wanted to do, you know, I raised my kids with good moral values. I wanted, I wanted to make sure my kids love animals the way I do and understand them as well. Uh, I yes, I did. I used to change behind bushes, you know, at, <laughs> like you were saying about the studio. Sorry about the studio. They said, don't worry about it. I used to change behind bushes, so this is pretty fancy, <laughs> you know. And uh, for me, it's a, it's about creating a dynasty with my kids. You know, Calvin also has a show in Nickelodeon. Andre has a show, Nadia Wild, and with me. So, so to have the three uh, the three of us sharing information to different stages is really is really what I love. The, uh, my family is contributing to the well-being of dogs. When do you realize you have this talent, that you have this ability to communicate with animals? When I came to America, you know, I came to America because I wanted to learn from Americans how to train dogs. I grew up watching Lassen Ring Teen Teen, so I really believed that all dogs in America were just like Lassen Ring Teen Teen. So I was going to learn from Americans and go back to Mexico and teach people what I learned from Lassen Ring Teen Teen. But the truth was is that most people didn't know how to have healthy communication with a dog or fulfill the needs of a dog, and this is why the dogs develop problems. That's when I realized that I have something very basic, very simple to offer to the American people. So with the new show, you guys are traveling across America. Mm -hmm. You are going to be encountering all different types of situations, all different types of animals. Tell me all about it. Well, I mean, one of my favorites, I got to do the help group, and it's based off in L.A. It's a school that focuses on uh, autistic children and specializes on helping autistic children. I grew up personally, uh, my cousins are autistic and they were very judged and, and uh, discriminated. Mm -hmm. And so with this school, they utilize the dogs to help bring out these emotions of the kids, to help bring out their well-being and to not focus on what their disability mm -hmm. is, but more on how can you execute mm -hmm. with the disability and, and move forward. Yeah, and the parents just want simple behaviors from their children, such as walking, such as saying a word, such as expressing affection. Right. And often the humans, even though they went to school, they can't bring this out of the children. And a dog, just by being so accept, you know, they, I love you un unconditionally, the, f the kids feel that. Right. And they want to walk with the dog, and they want to say the word dog before they say the word mom. dad or mom. So for a parent that for their for those those parents is a big accomplishment. So a dog can bring this excitement of life and learning quicker than a human. Mm -hmm. Have there ever been situations with dogs where they've been unbreakable, unteachable? You know that happens to me with humans, not with dogs. <laughs> We're worse than the dogs. <laughs> yeah, because you know um, my clients like to live in the past or the future. And sometimes because it takes an effort to transform, they don't feel like they, they, they want to do it at that time. Dog only goal in life is to be happy. So they don't want to postpone happiness. Most people, their, their, their goal is material things, you know, success and what we call success. But in the animal world, material things mean nothing. So they don't postpone happiness. 
So as soon as I teach him, you know, show him the way to happiness, the dog say, let's go, let's go to do exercise. Let's go to challenge our mind and enjoy happiness. I also saw one of the episodes is in my hometown of Philadelphia. Yeah. What's going on in Philly? Oh, throw away dogs. Throw, oh, that, tell me about that no, story. No, that's yours. You like well, that. Well, I love that story because the title is, is strong, by the way. You know, this is throw away dogs. And this, what, what, the, what happens is people throw away their dogs. They give them away. And this lady, who's not even a police officer, she, she just saw the opportunity of helping a dog and helping uh, police uh, departments who, are not, who don't have the funding to have a canine the dog. Right. right. So she goes and picks up like what people call the worst dog. Dogs who are being thrown away because they're behavioral problems. German Shepherds in Mal Malinois, by the way. That's what she goes and pick up, and she makes them a, a canine officer, a police canine that's dog. Cool, that's just incredible. That's it's awesome. so cool. She's not a police officer. She's not a trainer. Her husband. Her husband is a police officer, but not her. Yeah. So she said, okay, this dog has been thrown away. Police departments need canines, but they have no money. I'm going to grab this dog, and I'm going to make him a police officer. Mm -hmm. That is amazing, right? It's someone who has no idea about dogs but she has the idea of how to put things together they can uh, make a difference dogs are going to save their lives and police departments are going to have a canine, dog, yeah. canine yeah without spending a lot of money because usually thirty thousand dollars just to obtain a german shepherd from europe a well yeah. already trained thirty thirty thousand yeah. poor per german when shepherd. here dogs are in a shelter waiting to be adopted or euthanized so those dogs become police officers second chance it's second unbelievable. chance yeah. mm -hmm. I, we were joking around. People have been coming up to you in our office taking pictures. I've had a million Oscar winners come through these doors, and nobody wants to take pictures with them. You're, when you see the popularity, is it mind-blowing for you that people have taken to you and everything you guys are doing the way you know, they have? When people see me, they're also seeing or remembering their dogs. Right? And so it, um, um, by, that, by that very fact, I'm already part of their intimate space. So, because a dog means so much to people, you know, it's part of your heart, it's part of your spirit. So when they see me, it's, and, and, and if they have take some of the tips that I have given, them, they, they show gratitude. And that gratitude is what makes them want to take a picture with me. Speaking of tips, you have a book out with a bunch of tips. Yeah. Tell me about the book. This is not so much for people to train dogs or to rehabilitate dogs. This is more for uh, lessons that I learned from dogs, such as respect, trust, loyalty, love, um, you know, fulfillment, all of those things. I, I raised my kids because I saw how I, I knew how to raise dogs before. This is my first two kids I ever had. <laughs> so I needed some kind of support and some kind of guidance. So I pretty much took a lot of the cues and, and, uh, and learning experiences that I have with dogs. So this is more what I learned from a dog. Growing up, were you, because of your father, automatically attracted to animals and dogs? I've been involved with dogs my whole life, but uh, growing up, I've always been interested in other animals as well, and I've always told them I want to do other things too. Like I've, I, first, I didn't want to be with dogs; I wanted to be an astronomer. Mm -hmm. and then I said, "Man, that's too much. I can't do all that. I can't remember all that Back stuff." Back to the dogs. Yeah, let's just go keep it simple. Let's keep it instinctual. Keep not it in the family. Yeah, yeah. Keep it in the family. No paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> and so. Um, over over time, I started realizing what my true passion was. And it's not just dogs. It's working with all types of animals. I know a lot of general information that is probably not even relevant, and I just all these animals. And I just really have a, a strong appreciation and gr a gratitude for animals that have been here longer than me. And the great thing about it is he has the foundations already there. Trust. You know, have to be calm. Respect. You have to feel confident. And that's how you develop the relationship with animals, no matter what species it is. Mm -hmm. So the good thing is he has plenty of training with many dogs. Because my kids grew up with 65 dogs, mm -hmm. right? So they learn to gain their trust. They learn to gain their respect. So that, that knowledge, you can only earn it by doing hands-on. So he can go and work with whatever species he wants. What I find striking is it's one thing to be an expert at something. Like, you could be great with dogs. But getting on television and being good on television is a whole different mm -hmm. expertise. People don't realize, like, I do this for a living, but it took me years to get to the point where you forget the cameras are there. You right. feel like, okay, I'm not self-conscious anymore. Mm -hmm. But you were right off the bat, you were TV ready. Did you know that right off the bat? How, when did it click? Like, oh, I can do TV. Yeah, right. Uh, I just I was just very passionate for the from the beginning. I'm a very responsible person. I feel I put a lot of uh, stress on the on the boys uh, by being disciplined. Yes, and so once I get in the zone, it's it just camera means nothing now because I'm I'm sharing my passion. I'm sharing my discipline, and I guess I was ready because I already have the discipline for certain things. Who's been the coolest celebrity fan that you've encountered? I would have to say Jada. 
Jada Pinkett Smith. And she's a, just a cool person in general, by the way. By Period. By, 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 Her and Will are the yeah, best. Yeah, yeah. By, yeah. <laughs> Jada's family to us. Yeah. Jada's, you know, she's a, a soul sister for me. Mm-hmm. So uh, we share information. You know, sometimes she needs a little bit of help with instincts. Sometimes I need a, a little bit of help with, uh, you know, uh, yeah, emotions, yeah. Uh, emotions and spirituality. She She's always researching for, you know, to grow. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, we're good friends. How about through all these dogs, through all these pets, has there been one favorite one that's touched your heart more than the rest? I mean, there's multiple. For him, I mean, Daddy's always been his sidekick, his his right hand. Me personally, I don't have a favorite. I mean, all of them. I tell him there's times where I call, uh, where um, where we go to dinner, and we'll be eating sushi, and then I'll be like, Hey, do you remember this? He's like, Dude, I didn't, I don't remember that. How did you remember this? Like, I don't know, I don't know. And it'll just be memories of all these dogs, and the dog psychology that he had in South Central was very basic very uh, poverty struck in, but he made the most of it, which made, in a child's point of, point of view, it became a kingdom for me. It became yeah. somewhere I would go, with, I mean, we had agility courses, and it's just everywhere. We used Daddy's to take showers so in the bucket, because you know, I have 65 dogs. So we, could, <laughs> we couldn't have like a little balls to give water, yeah. so we put buckets, and that's what he used to just spend his time, like a jacuzzi, and the dogs would come and drink water from there. You know, and the, then the, after that, they started grooming him and yeah. things like that. So for him, that was fun. You know, it, it, it was a lot of fun. So and, and for me, me, what he was saying about it, I built a, I built a psychology with the trash that people used to throw away. Because I didn't have the funds, you know, but I, I had the vision. And so the kids saw, saw this parking lot turn into... You know, into I, a dream. To me, it seemed like a, like a Chinese temple. Because <laughs> you really love the Asian culture, but you really love, like, the jade stones, the... the, the the Buddha, the yeah. it's just anything that it has to do with peace, balance, tranquility, yeah. and serenity. And he, yeah, he loved it. I mean, every time the dogs after we're done with the agility, we go to the meditation room. The dogs, I had the most beautiful garden oh, in yeah. South Central. Oh yeah, the in most the beautiful hood, by far. In the hood, best I should have charged people to come in. <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> you know, you on top of that, on yeah. top of that, you're 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 welcomed by sixty five dogs, which half of them I rescue them from the streets. And so, aggressive dogs as yeah. well. They were do- they used I've to seen fight. some of your cases. Mm-hmm. I've watched your show a million times, and I, I would be scared out of my mind. Like right. I, And then you literally, like, calm them down. Yeah. Like, Benson is strolling around. I'm like, he's the most well-behaved dog, <laughs> obviously. But I've seen dogs that would be terrorizing us right now. We've had I've had interviews with dogs terrorizing us. Like yeah. barking or, like, what do you mean, like biting I've you? I've had dogs piss in the middle of an interview. Oh, we just had that. <laughs> we just had that. Yeah. <laughs> we had so it. Not with our dogs, yeah. but somebody else's dog. I want to ask you, being Mexican, obviously, yeah. there's so much right now going on yes. politically. What are your thoughts on what's happening at the moment? I th- listen, I am one of those guys who actually understand the reasons why uh, the border is important. I mean, I came to America illegally, so I you know I broke a rule. But at the same time, I had a dream. And America is, the, is that platform that allows people, they, they have no opportunities in their country to accomplish something that often is not available in America. So I created a new business. I created, I, I support a lot of people. I, I I'll definitely pay taxes. I understand. <laughs> you know what I mean? so I, I'm, I'm, Let's make sure we clarify. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I'm definitely one of those guys that came out with a solution to help a lot of dogs. You know, so a lot of people are very grateful that, uh, of what I share on television. Uh, but I, I totally understand the needs of, a, a, of a, you know. Of a controlled a, entry system. Controlled entry system, absolutely. But at the same time, is the dream can, it's hard to stop people with dreams. Right. That's actually, to me, it's illegal <laughs> to stop people. Right. I think the dilemma crime. that we face yeah. is not everybody who grows up to become Caesar Milan. You know, right. that's the dilemma. Well, it's I mean, not everybody accomplishes. Right, right. right. I and mean, that's very and true. That, so it's it's a funky situation. It's a double it's a double edged sword. Yeah, but it can put people to to focus more and focusing on how can you make an asset to society, you know. And so if and it can be like yeah, a questionary, like an how you're gonna make this country better? And and yeah. listen, third world country people have a lot more hunger than than modern society. So th- therefore, the creativity that we're gonna come sure. with sure. is gonna be different because our perspective is completely different. And the drive is different. The drive is different. Yeah, you the need people that immense. want to work. Yeah. That energy is very important for any country who wants to be the pack leader. Right. You need people that want to work. And that would probably be like the downside of, of excessive border control because then you don't get you don't bring in these people with dreams. You don't bring in people with drive. This, this drive, this this want of wanting to help people, people who can cure cancer, AIDS, you know, come up with a, a different medicine that doesn't kill mm-hmm. you, but also saves you at the same time. I think solutions. I mean, th- th- we have to come out with a solution. I, I understand, I respectfully, I, I, I agree with things like that, you know, obviously. 
but I, I, I'm, a, I'm a perfect example that immigrants can make a difference. Where does Dog Nation Empire go next? Where does this thing the go world. next? <laughs> well, Dog Nation is, uh, is, is the idea of Dog Nation is to make sure that we all participate. You know, that we all as a com we go back to the beginning of it takes a village to raise a child. We don't do that anymore. It, you know, it's, it becomes more individual oriented. And so it has so many ways of dealing with one problem. So agreement is the first thing we have to accomplish, then commitment, and then it's follow through. So Dog Nation is about bringing everybody together to become one big pack, one big nation. We all, we all love dogs, but dogs have issues, not because they want to have issues, it's because we create those issues for them by now fulfilling their needs. I just want to pay one last compliment. Your dad's a spectacular Jeez. dude, but it, it's really striking how grounded and humble and awesome you are considering the situation. So I just wanted to let you know you that so much, I've seen a lot of brats at 22 years yeah. old. And I, and trust me, I was at the forefront yeah. of that movement. So I had no option to even become a brat because, I mean, it's just like, oh, you want to act like that? Let's go walk no, the dogs. That's, that's good parenting. Yes, thank you. Congratulations thank on you. everything. Thank you.